A war veteran walked into a restaurant with his dog for breakfast. He placed his order and settled in, eager to enjoy his meal. Suddenly, the manager approached and kicked him out of the restaurant. The reason will break your heart. You need to leave this restaurant, Andrew shouted. His face was flushed with anger and his body shook with rage. Major Dixon Brown sat there in stunned silence, unable to grasp why the manager was so furious, especially since he had done nothing wrong. Andrew slammed his fists on the table, nearly overturning the dishes before pointing angrily toward the door. Out! Don't make me repeat myself, he yelled. His tone was cutting and disdainful, leaving the major bewildered. The veteran then noticed that the manager was angrily staring at the dog, sitting nervously beside him. Before he could even say a word, the manager stormed off only to return with a plank, big and heavy enough to inflict serious harm. He threatened to use it on the poor veteran. Get out of my restaurant with your dirty dog, Andrew screamed. The major was stunned by Andrew's outburst. His dog was clean and well cared for, so he couldn't understand the source of Andrew's anger. He politely asked that Andrew leave so he could have his breakfast and take his medications, a routine crucial for his health in his late 60s. But Andrew refused. In fact, the veteran's words only got him more upset. You should have left the moment I asked you to. Now you are going to regret it, Andrew thundered. A smirk crossed his face as he tightened his grip on the stick. Taking a few steps back, he positioned himself like a golfer about to swing. With a powerful motion, he brought the stick down hard on the dog's face. The dog yelped in pain, but before it could react, Andrew struck its hips with the stick. The dog cried out, trying to limp, but it couldn't put weight on its hind legs. The major watched in horror, stunned and unprepared for such a brutal act. As if that wasn't enough, Andrew snatched the cup of coffee and hurled it across the room. But the major's attention was swiftly diverted to his beloved dog, Arthur, who lay limp on the floor. The veteran's heart raced as he rushed to his pet's side, cradling Arthur's head in his hands. Tears streamed down his face as he whispered apologies, his voice trembling with anguish. Arthur, I'm so sorry. My boy, you didn't deserve that. He gently stroked the dog's muzzle, his hands shaking with despair. The coffee-stained clothes and the commotion around him faded into the background as he poured all his love and sorrow into that moment, begging his loyal companion to stay with him. Major Dixon Brown's life was a testament to his strength and resilience. He dedicated over 40 years to serving his country, tirelessly working his way up the ranks. His passion for the Army was ignited at a young age, and by 20, he had completed his training at the Army Academy and embarked on his military career. At 27, he met the love of his life, a kind and charming woman named Sarah at a book club. They fell deeply in love and got married soon after. Tragedy struck when Sarah passed away in a tragic accident, leaving Major Brown heartbroken. He mourned her loss deeply, and his grief was palpable. Despite his pain, Major Brown chose not to remarry, instead channeling all his energy into his military service. He threw himself into his work, using his duties to cope with the loss of his beloved wife. His dedication and perseverance earned him the respect and admiration of his comrades, and he rose through the ranks to become a decorated major. As Major Brown advanced in rank and experience, many young officers sought his mentorship. They admired him for his sharp intellect and unmatched strategic skills. By the age of 45, he had mentored nine young men, guiding them to become outstanding individuals. Dixon was known for his strictness, compassion, and dedication to his work. At 50, he was assigned to lead a critical operation on the coast of Russia. The mission was perilous, and the enemy's forces were exceptionally well prepared. During the intense combat, Dixon tragically lost all of his men. As Dixon cradled the lifeless body of his favorite soldier, he pleaded for him to take a deep breath and fight. But the young man took his last breath in the veteran's arm. Major Brown sat on the ground for hours, consumed by grief over the men he had lost, men he had loved as his own children. Eventually he rose, overwhelmed by sorrow, and walked away. Distracted by his anguish, he failed to notice an enemy drone circling overhead. Meanwhile, a few soldiers across the alley signaled him, but it was too late. The drone fired an explosive, destroying the area. Although Dixon was fortunate to survive the blast, he was left in a state of profound shock. Two weeks later, Major Brown woke up in the hospital, his mind flooded with memories of the brave sons he had lost in the war. Overwhelmed by the pain and trauma, he broke down and cried uncontrollably. The doctors did their best to comfort him, but the depth of his grief led them to use sedation. Despite their efforts, he would often wake up with screams. At night, he would call out the names of the men he had lost, sleepwalking and talking in his distress. Worried about his mental well-being, the doctors kept a close eye on him, stepping in with support 
and resources whenever he exhibited suicidal tendencies or showed signs of distress that might lead him to harm himself. They recommended therapy, but the Major saw no reason to pursue it. He was determined to end it all. Despite his resistance, the doctors insisted that Major Brown see a psychologist. Reluctantly, Dixon agreed to try therapy. After two weeks of intense sessions, the psychologist suggested he get a dog. Having never owned a pet before, Dixon was skeptical about the idea. However, the psychologist reassured him that it would be beneficial. Specifically, the psychologist recommended a German Shepherd. Dixon thought about the psychologist's advice and eventually decided to get a dog. After being discharged from the hospital, he visited a veterinary clinic and brought home a service dog he named Arthur. Arthur quickly became his best friend and constant companion, running errands around the house and joining Dixon for walks, swimming and hunting. Arthur proved to be an excellent hunter, proudly bringing his catches back to Dixon. Most importantly, Arthur provided comfort during Dixon's traumatic nights. When Dixon screamed and jerked violently in his sleep, Arthur would jump on the bed and lie close to him, preventing him from falling. After these episodes, Dixon would look up to see Arthur gazing at him with compassion, and the simple act of rubbing Arthur's head brought him a soothing sense of calmness. There were nights when Dixon was tormented by nightmares, and Arthur would rush to his side trying to wake him. Arthur became his lifesaver, and Dixon came to see him as family. Dixon's life depended on Arthur, who remained a loyal companion, always eager to please his owner. Dixon was grateful he had gotten a dog. His life began to improve, and he started connecting more with people in the neighborhood. He smiled more and seemed to age backward. One morning, Dixon woke up with a growling stomach, craving a satisfying breakfast. He decided to take a stroll with his loyal companion, Arthur, who was friendly enough to roam free without a leash. After getting dressed, they set out on their walk enjoying the fresh morning air. As they sauntered along, the aroma of freshly brewed coffee wafted through the air, drawing them to a nearby restaurant renowned for its exceptional coffee. Dixon's curiosity was piqued, and he thought, why not start the day with a great cup of coffee? And so, they ambled into the restaurant, ready to indulge in a delightful breakfast. Dixon ordered a cup of coffee and toasted bread, then found a seat. Just as he was about to start his meal, he noticed the furious manager shouting and walking towards him. Surprised, Dixon wondered if the manager had mistaken him for someone else. You old man, leave this restaurant at once, Andrew screamed. At that moment, Dixon realized the restaurant manager was talking to him. Andrew didn't even give Dixon a chance to take a bite of his breakfast. He immediately grabbed a plank and threatened him. Although Dixon could easily overpower the manager in a physical fight, he chose to remain diplomatic. However, Andrew was beyond reasoning and struck Arthur with the plank, injuring the dog. Andrew's life was marked by struggle and pain. Growing up in a troubled home, he turned to drugs to escape his emotional turmoil. At 18, he ran away, surviving on the streets for over four years by stealing and using drugs. His mother finally found him and got him into rehab, but Andrew escaped again. This time, the cops caught him and brought him back home. Afterward, his mother enrolled him in business school, hoping a new path would help him turn his life around. Andrew graduated but couldn't find a job, relying on his mother's support. Though she provided for his needs, he remained unhappy and continued stealing from her and their neighbors. He was arrested multiple times, but his mother always bailed him out. The constant stress of Andrew's antics eventually took a toll on his mother's health, and she passed away due to hypertension. Andrew's struggles ultimately led to the loss of the one person who had always been there for him. His mother's death made him realize no one was coming to save him and that he needed to do better for himself, so he was forced to find a job. Fortunately, one of his mother's old associates offered him a position as the manager of the restaurant. In the first two years, he excelled and earned everyone's admiration. He even settled down with a beautiful woman he met at the restaurant. Determined to honor his mother's memory, Andrew managed to stay clean for three years. However, as his mother's memory began to fade, he fell back into drug use, this time more heavily. He started using the restaurant's money to buy expensive drugs, often sniffing them in the restroom. The drugs made him irritable and he would lash out at the staff for no reason. He loved how he felt after sniffing drugs, so he kept buying more. He managed to hide this lifestyle from the management. The staff knew about it, but neither of them dared bring it up or report him for fear of losing their jobs. The cost of these hard drugs was exorbitant, leading him to embezzle a substantial amount from the restaurant's account. Within six months, the company had accumulated a significant deficit. When the management brought it to his attention, he shifted the blame to the economy and poor company policies promising to take corrective action. Frustrated, he turned to gambling to try to pay off his debts, but the more he gambled, the more money he lost. His aggression grew, and he began drinking alcohol to forget his worries, but the combination of alcohol and drugs only worsened his situation. He became a sadist, 
disliked by everyone. Each evening, he would come home angry and take out his aggression on his wife until she couldn't endure his violent behavior any longer and left him. Andrew was left all alone, seething with anger. The next day at work, Andrew saw Dixon and his dog. Mistaking Dixon for a pauper due to his appearance, he decided to take out his frustrations on the poor old man and the innocent dog. Andrew didn't care that he hurt the dog. He wasn't at all moved by the old man's dog. He kept barking at the old man to leave his restaurant with his useless dog. I don't like them. I don't like dogs, he screamed. Everything suddenly made sense to Dixon. Andrew had reacted with hostility and thrown him out simply because he hated dogs. Dixon was nearly in tears as he watched Arthur lying on the ground, foaming at the mouth. He explained to Andrew that the laws allowed pets to assist disabled people and Arthur posed no threat. Despite this, Andrew continued to rant. He was furious because the veteran seemed greatly bothered by an ordinary dog. It made no sense to Andrew. No one cared about him. Why should a dog receive special treatment? Feeling deeply hurt and angered by the inhumane treatment, Dixon pulled out his phone and called the military police. Within five minutes, four vans arrived at the restaurant. After Dixon explained the situation, the officers were outraged. They dragged a stunned Andrew out and handcuffed him. Andrew stared in shock at Dixon, bewildered by his ability to summon such authority, especially seeing the military police apologizing profusely to him. When one of the officers explained that Dixon was a well-honored veteran, Andrew turned pale. If he had known, he wouldn't have dared mess with him. Andrew screamed and begged Major Dixon for forgiveness, but Dixon, deeply upset over his dog's condition, refused to listen. Andrew continued pleading as he was shoved into a waiting van. While waiting for the emergency vehicle to take Arthur to the hospital, Dixon took out his phone and recorded a video, condemning the restaurant's inhumane actions. He also filmed Arthur lying weakly on the ground. Within an hour, the video had over 10,000 views. The restaurant authorities quickly issued an apology, but Dixon was not interested. All he cared about was ensuring his dog's recovery. Meanwhile, Arthur had been rushed to the clinic and placed on life support. As Dixon sat beside Arthur's fragile body at the clinic, memories of their seven years together flooded his mind. Arthur, his loyal companion, his confidant, and his family lay fighting for his life. Dixon's heart ached with every breath, every second ticking away, unsure if his dear friend would make it through. After examining Arthur, the vet delivered shocking news. The blow had damaged a part of Arthur's skull and his hips. The dog needed to go into surgery right away, but it would take a miracle for Arthur to survive. The veteran couldn't bear the thought of losing the one being who had stood by him unconditionally. Before the veterinarian left the room, Dixon grabbed him gently by the arm and whispered, I believe in miracles. Do anything you can, save my friend. The animal doctor simply flashed a sad smile at him, patted his shoulder and walked away. As the surgery dragged on, Dixon paced the reception hall, his palms drenched with sweat and his lips trembling in silent pleas. The thought of a world without Arthur was unbearable. Every tick of the clock felt like an eternity. Finally, the vet emerged and Dixon rushed forward, his heart racing with hope. But the vet's eyes, cast downward, spoke a language Dixon was dreading. He braced himself, his breath held as he prayed for a miracle. But the words that followed shattered his world. I'm sorry, Major. We lost Arthur. Dixon's legs nearly gave way as a searing pain shot through his head, forcing him to cling to the wall for support. Tears burst forth like a torrent and his body shook uncontrollably. A strangled cry escaped his lips as he fought to contain the sobs. The vet's comforting hand on his shoulder was a meager solace. The nightmare felt all too real, and the cruel truth hit him like a tidal wave. Arthur was gone, leaving him alone in the dark. With a heavy heart, Dixon stumbled into the ICU to bid his loyal friend a final farewell. Arthur lay still with his eyes closed. Dixon's tears flowed anew as he gently stroked Arthur's fur. Travel in the light, faithful companion. May your journey be peaceful, he said, his voice barely audible. Arthur's body was prepared and Dixon drove him home. He took Arthur to his favorite spot in the garden and buried him there. As he placed the last clump of earth on the grave, he broke down in tears. Eventually, he stood up and he gave a heartfelt salute to his late companion. Dixon knew his life would never be the same again. The news of Arthur's death went viral, sparking an outpouring of sympathy from pet lovers and widespread anger towards Andrew for his inhumane act. The restaurant authorities offered to replace Arthur, but Dixon knew the bond they shared was irreplaceable. He couldn't imagine starting over with another dog. At that moment, he felt he had lost all will to live. The restaurant authorities hired a new caregiver for Dixon and promised to provide him with three meals a day for the next 10 years, ensuring he would never have to buy food again. Meanwhile, Andrew remained in detention awaiting his court trial. 
The weeks in his cell gave him time to reflect on how much he had hurt the people who loved him. He thought about his mother and his wife, whom he had badly mistreated. Drugs and alcohol had ruined his life, and now he was facing the consequences. In the weeks following Arthur's death, Dixon's heart was shattered into a million pieces. But as he navigated the darkest moments of his grief, he discovered a beacon of hope. He began volunteering at a local animal shelter, where he found solace in helping orphaned and stray dogs. The shelter became his sanctuary, and the dogs his new purpose. As he spent more time with the dogs, Dixon realized that his love for Arthur was not limited to one dog, but endless. He adopted a playful puppy, who reminded him of Arthur's mischief, and named him King. The new dog brought laughter and joy back into Dixon's life, and he finally felt a sense of closure and healing. Meanwhile, Andrew faced justice for his cruel actions. He was sentenced to a year in prison with mandatory therapy. Before being taken away, he publicly apologized to Dixon and pleaded for forgiveness from his wife. Though Dixon forgave him, the pain of losing Arthur still lingered. However, he knew that Arthur's legacy lived on through the countless dogs he helped at the shelter and King who brought him joy every day. Dixon's heart was full again, and he knew that love never dies. It only transforms. What do you think about Major Dixon Brown's bond with Arthur? Feel free to express your thoughts in the comments section. Turn on your notifications for our next video.